Hello. I um, I was reminded today of the French playwright, the 17th century French playwright Molière, and uh, he is considered by many to be one of the the great French literary writers. And um, um, he and he wrote his play called the Imaginary Invil the Imaginary Invalid, and uh, it was about this terrible hypochondriac and how all of these doctors tried to treat him. Um, Molière basically was through his plays. I mean, he wrote lots of different types of plays, but his comedies um, and farces were a piss take of the clergy, the legal system, the medical system. And uh, he upset them so much that when he died, um, no doctor would come visit him when he was sick. No lawyer would manage his, uh, execute his estate and no church would bury him. That's how offensive he was willing to be. And with comedy, he was drawing attention to the fact that these industries... Um, overcomplicate their processes. The medical profession, for example, using Latin words for body parts. There's no purpose to that. There's no purpose to that. P potentially a Latin nomenclature enables you to be specific about certain different muscles, potentially, but really what it does is it creates a barrier. Same with lawyers. Lawyers, many times, they use a type of lawyer speak, a legalese, which is almost incomprehensible to us. Yes, to them, it creates watertight agreements, but really, it means it's impossible to do anything without spending a fortune with lawyers. These professions create a barrier to our understanding, to our control. And they're you know, I'm, not, I'm not besmirching the reputation of many doctors that care and want to do good. What I'm saying is, institutionally, these systems, these mechanisms, uh, actually create a massive problem for us. But, but where I'm most kind of raging today, where I want to jump on and have a rant, is, is the industry of psychotherapy and the, the kind of shoulders uh, we're standing on. Uh, Freud made it so unnecessarily complicated. He created a whole culture of the way psychoanalysis needs to happen, which means that for most people it's out of their reach. People aren't willing to sit two times a week and don't have the ability, the time, the money for hours, for years. Two, three, four, five, seven years, some people, in, in, in bi-weekly therapy sessions, where the therapist sits out of view and remains completely neutral, where they organize their office in such a way that you could tell nothing about their personal life, and they give nothing of themselves, and they ask probing questions, and they can analyze your problem in the first session, second session. Do they tell you? No, because you have to work it out for yourself. Only by consciously ruminating on, on yourself will you be able to work out your problem and resolve it. But that's not true. Just the tools we can use now to engage with people's unconscious mind, get them to negotiate with the different parts of their brain, the different parts of their activities, the part that's choosing to sabotage, the, chart, the part that doesn't believe they're good enough, the part that believes that success is hard or, or that love is not worth it. You can find these parts and you can locate them in time. And you can dissolve these limiting beliefs and you can release the pent up emotion. You don't have to talk about it ad infinitum. Every week I'm working with people, they're like, I have been in years of therapy and what you've taught me and what you've shown me has to blow my mind in one or two sessions. It's, and that's not because I'm, I'm wielding some kind of extraordinary skill, it's because I am keeping it simple. As we develop and as we grow as humans, there are moments when our life is difficult painful moments and it breaks our heart or it angers us and we can't function, we can't process all of that. So we have a conscious awareness of some of it and like the weight of the iceberg below the surface, a main swathe of our tensions and our fears and our angers and our resentments go unprocessed. But so that we can function, we tell ourselves lies to make it more bearable. We blame ourselves or we tell ourselves it's normal that all people let us down or we tell ourselves not to hope and not to try because we protect ourselves from disappointment. Every choice we make unconsciously to protect us from present pain ends up becoming a prison that locks us in complexity and complication. Not just because it prevents us from succeeding or flying or, 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 or going for it, but sometimes because we're going for it and doing all that stuff because we're fighting against an internal idea that we're not okay. I'm on some forums just out of sheer morbid curiosity that focus on the psychoanalytical method and it drives me crazy. It's almost as maddening as speaking to philosophy students about life. It's just, they just go round and round in endless complexity. It's like, honestly, there are difficult moments. 
those pain points in our life define us unnecessarily and we hold on to unresolved emotional energy in our mind body and having release work on the body and release work from the mind, having emotional catharsis where you're not just crying because it was bad, you're recognizing you're, you've been hiding from the deeper aspects of the pain, which is really the disappointment in the parents and the horror of what that means about our, our life and our fear of survival. And if you can process that tension in the body and you can dissolve the limiting beliefs in the mind, then people get to have profound breakthroughs in how, what they, who they think they are and what they're capable of. And it is maddening to me that we have a whole industry where even at some of the most reputable organisations in the world where you go, like the Priory, the first meeting you get in the Priory is what medicine can we give you to help manage your condition? The first. Not a therapy session. It's a meds it's a meds conversation. There are people now medicating children as young as three in America. Flipping hell, they're medicating pets. We still have electroconvulsive therapy in this country, in every organized, civilized country. We are electrocuting people. Yes, because for some people with pronounced problems, their problems are reduced by electrocuting their brain. Go figure. Well, that's like cutting off a leg to lose weight. It's effective. You lose two stone in an instant. But it's not sustainable and it's not appropriate and it's not necessary. If that is necessary, then it's too late. Am I saying that there are some people that can be saved that, that are lost and the only thing that helps them is ECT therapy? Maybe. I admit that. But that means we have failed them. If that's what we actually end up needing to resort to, we've already lost. The fact that there are 40, that every 40 seconds there's a suicide attempt in the world, we've lost. And this is because most normal average people hear about therapy or they try it or they have a counsellor who's just asking about how they feel and they, they're not giving them any solutions. They're not analysing why they're sabotaging. They're not giving them the tools to change that. They're not looking at their unresolved ancestral stuff. They're not talking to them about mind programming or the power of changing your language patterns. It's just, ah, oh, it's just, there's so much of it, it's so limited, and it's based on these, like, like tools that were developed nearly, uh, what, 100 years ago. And the, the, the resistance, to it, it's like the shame associated with mental health and the stigmatization of it. It's just preposterous in today's world. Everyone could benefit from looking at who do I think I am? How do I feel the way that I do? What's holding me back? Where did it come from? What happened to me? It's, I can't tell you how many times I speak to people. They're like, I had a happy childhood. I'm like, I'm not asking you to question the validity of your childhood. Coming to therapy doesn't mean you were miserable as a child. It means you don't realize how miserable you were at points. And if you haven't realized how inevitably miserable you would have been at some points, then you are not able to connect with who you truly are. And if anyone doesn't think that they were inevitably miserable at certain points, then you are in denial. And there's nothing to be ashamed of about recognizing we need to look at our psychology. We need to find these aspects of our life. We need to scoop up our inner children and bring them home to love and tell them it was never their fault and that they're fucking amazing and that they deserve love not because they're getting good grades or they go on to have a successful career not because of some internal meritocracy where we've earned the right to be loved it's like oh we're born here and we deserve love end of and the fact that our life didn't reflect that at all times and our carers did their best but they let us down learning how to process those moments that's what's called for, not medicine. We're not depressed because there's an imbalance of chemicals in our brain. It's the reverse of that. Because we're depressed, there's an imbalance of chemicals in our brain. And that's a fundamentally different way of looking at it. The depression is saying, hey, something's unresolved. I'm unhappy. Are oh, you unhappy? Oh, well, let's put some pills in your brain. No. Why am I unhappy? What's happened to you? What do you need to process? How are you enjoying your work? Are your relationships fulfilling? Are you having boundaries? It, it, this is the fundamental questions that we need to ask before we put people on pills. Can pills help people regulate if they're right on the edge? Definitely. Is there a place for them? Definitely. Should it be the first step? Second? Third? Probably fucking not. It's ridiculous. And yet I just, I spend my time just trying to be in a state of peace and let the world trundle on and doing what it's doing. But it isn't okay. It just isn't okay. And I don't want to point fingers and make the world wrong, but I want to, I also want people to recognize it doesn't have to be this way. If you're struggling, you're struggling because things are unresolved. And you know what? The most amazing, beautiful thing is when we can have the courage to journey into those dark places, what we get 
is uh, we, we're buying fragments of our lost selves back. We're bringing them back home. And they can tell us who we really are and how we want to live and what we should be doing with our time. They're not the unfortunate, lost and broken aspects of ourselves left behind in some timeline. They are our powerhouses. They are the most powerful, beautiful, creative, playful, sexy parts of our self that we have forgotten. And coming back to that, we're moving from being childish in response to life, where we're territorial and proprietorial and jealous and comparison based, and to being childlike, playful, free, joyful, joyous, alive and lively. Twink in your eye, spring in your step. That's everyone's birthright. And I believe Freud and the foundation upon which we started, he broke ground, but he just went flipping weird. And he made it way more complicated to make it to aggrandize his intellectual understanding of the human condition, which was essentially spiritless on so many levels. And I just think we're missing the point and it's simpler. And I believe everyone could get the benefit of thinking about these things and going on these journeys. Instead of being put off by people who have gone to the doctors, they put them straight on medicine, or someone's gone for some woeful, flipping six sessions of, of terrible, terrible counselling, or, 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 or woeful CBT. It's not all woeful. Some of it really is. Some of it can be amazing. But the point is, people are put off. And they still think people that you have to have some kind of significant problem. If you've gone to therapy, you've got some kind of problem childhood. You've not had a problem childhood, you've just had problems from your childhood still running the show. And it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, ran over.